Hello everyone. Last year I did a video um, called my top five modern fountain pens from my collection, my personal collection. And um, it was fun to do and, and I think I have to look back on it now. Uh, so I'm going to do another video, uh, another top five of for 2023. Let's see, I'm just going to think about what has changed in that over that, that course of that year. Um, and if my tastes have changed. So last year, my list included my Lamy 2000, my Pilot Capless, my Pilot E95S, my Twisby Vac Mini, and my Twisby Echo. And I <laughs> put my Twisby Echo as my top fountain pen because it's a workhorse. I use it all the time. But as you notice, it's empty right now because it recently I wrote it dry and then I was given it a clean and I'm still going to take it apart and do a little bit more cleaning up on it. And I'll re I'll, I'll put ink in it again, uh, but I'm just giving it a little tidy up. But so it's not actually in rotation at the moment and uh, it, it's still a great pen. What did it make this year's list? Hmm. We'll have to find out. So we're going to take these out and I'm just going to start in no particular order for this year's, we'll call it greatest of all time pens for 2023 from my personal collection my personal collection what are my favorite pens hmm well actually let's just take a look at the last year's the Lamy 2000 I would still consider this one of my greatest pens in my collection uh, it's just a classic pen if you're into fountain pens if you're a collector you probably have a Lamy 2000 in your collection it's been around since the 1960s and the thing is it hasn't changed it, and it's still in production it's, might, might, this, there might have been a few little tweaks here and there but it's essentially the same pen uh, since then so i'm going to actually continue to have this in my top five fountain pens from my collection it's uh what can i tell you about the lamy 2000 well mine has a fine nib Um, it's a German made pen. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, so a fine nib compared, a, a German fine nib compared to a, say, Japanese fine nib is quite a bit broader. Uh, just different writing styles, and different concepts of what fine nibs are. Um, it has, it's made of macrolon, which is like a fiberglass. It has a plated um, gold nib, uh, brushed steel section here, little um, ink windows that you can just make out right there, and it's a piston filler. And the thing is, the, the knob is back here, and it is so finely machined that it's actually really hard, unless you really go looking for it, to see the seam. You can but can't even really feel it when I rub my run my fingers along it. And it's just a classic German Bajas inspired, inspired design. Still one of my favorite pens. Yeah. Very handsome pen. So that is still in my top five list. New to this year to my collection and to the top five list is this beautiful Diplomat Arrow. Once again, it's a German-made pen. Um, there's a little propeller um, logo. It's really kind of hard to see on the finial there. It's uh, aluminum, I'm, I'm assuming. It's all metal. Very nice. It's a heavy pen. Fairly large nib. Um, it posts metal section here, sort of an anodized uh, black finish. And so Diplomat is another German manufacturer of fountain pens. And this is a medium nib on this one. And when I look at the writing comparisons, even though this is a medium, it's a Yowo nib. 
It's actually fairly similar in, in line with, to, with my line, Lamy 2000 fine medium, uh, fine nib, which is quite interesting. So to me anyway, it's all metal construction, very nicely machined. Uh, the threads are metal on metal. It's a cartridge, uh, converter filling system. And some people might find it a heavy pen, but I quite like it. And it's very cool. It feels very nice in the hand. Um, and it's quite different looking from most fountain pens in some ways. At first glance, you would think it's a cigar shape, but it's actually inspired by the Zeppelins of the, well, the 30s, the 20s, the 30s, uh, airships of the olden olden days so it has that beautiful shape uh, this is the black silver lined and this is sort of a machined grooves here it just has a really nice feel to it it says diplomat germany nice clip yeah i like this pen a lot and um it's you know when i <clears throat> It is a little pricey for a steel nib, and that might be one of the reasons why it's not hugely popular in some cases. Um, but it comes in a lot of really nice colors, it's really well made. You're paying for the machining, the, the, the precision fits. <laughs> uh, you can get it with a gold nib. And uh, yeah, I quite like this pen. It's, so that is in my top five found pens for 2023. Uh, another pen. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. From last year, this was in my my top five list. Uh, it's my Pilot E95S, and I'm going to con continue to uh, include this in my top five fountain pens for 2023. So, this is sort of a reproduction of vintage fountain pens that were made in Japan in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Pilot made um, the Elite back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, that was almost exactly like this. Um, actually, and, and companies such as Platinum and Sailor and a few others made very similar pens uh, at, to this. And so this is the modern version. It's a pull cap, and it has a really nicely, like, a very exact fitting cap. It, even though it's plastic on, uh, plastic bodied, and plastic, is that a plastic cap? Yeah, plastic cap. It really does feel secure. It doesn't. You don't. I don't feel like it's just going to drop off, and it's a posting pen, which I quite like. And this is a fine, um, fine nib. Pilot E95S, fine nib. And I meant, uh, uh, this actually has ginger chicken in it, um, which is a, a, a Wonder Pens exclusive ink from Dominant Industry, and it matches the, 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 the pen really nicely. Um, I tend to try to match up my pens. Um, you know, if they're colored, I try to, if they have a certain, this is a burgundy, uh, so I like to go with sort of reddish inks in it. Uh, the other two, because they're sort of black or silver, I can pretty much put on any ink I like in them. Uh, so I, I love to change up the colors quite a bit in those black ones. So yeah, there, there you have three pens for this year. And two of them are Two of them are from last year, you know, so, so my next pen <laughs> is my Pilot Custom 74. Uh, I got this last year, actually, uh, later part of not, well, middle of last year, uh, Pilot Custom 74, and it has a soft medium nib, and I really love the nib on this. I'm probably going to go out on a limb and say this is my finest writing pen. Smoothest. Uh, it makes 
almost every ink look great in this pen. Uh, you know, I've often thought I would love gray inks, and it took me a little while to find some gray inks I like. Uh, but what I realized is any gray inks I liked were in, the, I would put it in the Custom 74, and they just looked nicer. Uh, it's a wetter, it's a, it has a beautiful flow, such a smooth, soft line. Delight to, to, it, it's delightful to write with. It's beautiful to look at. I have a thing for black and gold frames. Uh, black and gold frames. Black and gold pens. And uh, this is a beautiful pen. And nice size. Uh, yeah, it's a great pen. I love it. And uh, it came, I got it after I did last year's video, so it probably would have been on last year's video if I had it at the time, but I have it this, this year, and it's on my new list. And uh, what do I like? So, Pilot is possibly my favorite company. I would have to say that. Um, they make such great pens, you know, all price ranges. They all seem to work. So, there we have four pens. U95S, Lamy 2000, Pilot Custom 74, and Diplomat Arrow. So, this year's best pen, favorite pen, this year, 2023. I'm going to call it the greatest pen in my collection. Well, greatest modern pen in my collection. What is it? Hmm. Well, it's pretty easy to guess. If you've seen any of my videos recently... It's this. That's a Pelican M405 with a fine nib. And it writes very well. Very, it, it's a beautiful writer. I would have to... Actually, which is the better writer? Mm. I'm trying to think. I, I had said this is probably my best writer. Oh, they're both almost equal. Um, I would say they're equal. <laughs> I'm going to just say that. I can't choose. And this has a, a, a fine nib. It's a 14 karat nib. Uh, it's plated... I oh, can't remember what it's plated with. <laughs> but it's a beautiful little pen. Um, so I ordered this from Cult Pens. Um in England, and uh, what I, I lucked out um, recently this year, I think Pelican started changing its manufacturing process on a few things. Um, nowadays, the, the stripes are all opaque. Um, older pens, the black lines are actually translucent, so it's like an ink window, and I lucked out by receiving one that has the translucent lines. You can't actually choose which pen you you get nowadays. They if you get one with the translucent or opaque, that's just how it is. Uh but they have mixed stock. And I was lucky enough to get one of the older pens. Uh it's a piston filler. Um so Pelican Pelican Superan Superan uh line comes in the in different sizes, uh, the, the 400 being the smallest, um, then the next size up would be 600, and then 800, and then the largest is the 1000. Um, the 1000 is actually quite a bit bigger, um, and some people probably would probably actually tend to go towards the 600 or 800 size wise. I'm a huge fan of vintage pens, so. I really like smaller pens, actually, and posted. This suits my hand quite well. I don't have the the. I don't have huge hands. I don't have small hands, but it fits in there very nicely. Um, it's it's a perfect size pen. It uh, the section here is small. I don't mind that. You can feel the threads, but they're not so sharp that they're distracting. Matter of fact. It's kind of nice. It's not overly smooth. I tend to hold my hand, my grip on the threads, actually. Um, what can I say about it? It's just a lovely, lovely pen. It has that classic 
pelican clip, the face, and the finial, there's the logo with one chick. I believe originally back in the early years of manufacturing, there were four chicks. I wonder if someday there will be no chick in the on the, on the logo. But anyway, I don't know. I have to be honest, I'm once you get a pelican, I, I think, gosh, what's my next? This is sort of a grail pen. I keep hitting the camera, I'm sorry. This is a grail pen. Um, but yeah, I might need another pelican grail pen. <laughs> Someday, maybe next year. Who knows? I'll see. I'll see. Save my pennies. But would I go for this 600? Or would I go for a different color? Because it actually comes in quite a... It comes in a number of really attractive colors. Um, you know, uh, and some limited edition colors. Um, I might even try the 200 series. The 200 series is the same size as the 400, except it has a steel nib. But And there's some lovely colors in that. They don't have the stripes either, the 200 series. Um, but that's the only thing. So yeah, there you have it. My greatest of all... my <laughs> The greatest pens in my personal fountain pen collection. And if I had to choose the order... Hmm, well... Let's pick out the order. Pelican, number one. Pilot Custom, number two. Lamy 2000, number three. E95S is number four. And the Diplomat Arrow comes in at five. I wonder what... Will, I wonder what my list will be next year. It's kind of funny. After I got the Grail pen here, the little Pelican... I was like, oh, is that it? <laughs> Do I have other grails? Um, I don't know. I probably have a couple other grail pens on my, in my mind. Um, but I have no urge at the moment to say run out and buy another Twisby, you know, because I have several Twisbys and I really love my Twisbys. Um, but I don't really know if I need another Twisby because the ones I have are are lovely and uh so i don't need to go buy a special edition color so maybe i'm done with twisby for a while even though it's one of my favorite brands so maybe i'm done buying twisbies for a little while pilot <clears throat> i have a weakness for pilot eight the pilot custom 823 is probably a grail pen for me so yeah maybe someday down the down the line i'll get one of those wonder if that would be on this list someday down the line Diplomat. I don't need any more diplomats, but some of the cheaper ones I might try. Might try, but I don't. I can't see them making my list. And I don't need any more colors or nib sizes in the diplomat. But it's a beautiful pen, and I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Lamy. I don't know if I need any more Lamy's unless there's something vintage that comes up. You know, uh, some older ones. Uh, the artist, I believe, was the original name of Lamy. Let me know if that's right, artist. A-R-T-U-S. Um, but yeah, there's some pilots. Lots of, yeah, actually, there's a lot of pilots that <laughs> would, would are, are of interest to me, and maybe I'll get another one or two. Uh, yeah, I could see myself getting another Pelican. Who knows? We'll see. So anyway, I hope you don't mind my rambling on. I hope you don't mind my, my doing... Uh, 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 the new greatest pens, but it's nice to look back and see what has changed in my collecting habits and in my usage. I use these two pens the most, actually, the Custom 74 and the Pelican. I use the, the other three a lot, but these two the most now. Yeah, I'm always picking up those. Um, so actually, do you have any of these pens in your collection? And if so, would they be in your top five? That's that's interesting to know. And I hope you're having a great day. And let me know what you think. What would be a good grail pen? Waterman Karen is on my list probably. But if I was to get a, a Pelican, should I go for the 200 or another 400 in a different color? Hmm. All these things to think about. Probably a different nib size, of course. 
But anyway, I hope you have a great day. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I have a bit of a cold. Sorry, it's raining here. Hopefully it's raining in Nova Scotia as we speak so that they can fight the fires that are going on over there. We've avoided forest fires on PEI. Uh, it's been very dry, but luckily we were having some rain this week. And I hope everybody's safe and well, and thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I guess hit that notification bell. So anyway, talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.